It's time to welcome the wine ladies with Georgia and Suzanne, an entertaining hour topped up with great ideas about wine, where to dine, anything and everything to do with the vine. Great conversation, lots of laughter, guests from all walks of life, food and wine, music, art, sports, and much more, all on The Wine Ladies. Hi everyone, we're The, the wine, wine Ladies. I'm Georgia. And I'm Suzanne, and welcome to One Sip at a Time. We are so excited because we have been having a fantastic contest the past mm. couple of weeks involving the Niagara-on-the-Lake area and the Niagara B&B &B Association. We've given almost $3,500 in prizes away so far. And you know what? Niagara-on-the-Lake, one of the regional appellations of the Niagara Peninsula, is one of our most wonderful wine regions that we have in Ontario. And the thing about Niagara-on-the-Lake, there are so many things to do there. It is really an extraordinary place. In fact, you know what? I think it was voted out of the top 25 destinations in Canada mm -hmm. by TripAdvisor. It was ranked the 12th top destination. So we have a lot of wonderful things that we're going to explore today all on Niagara on the lake. We've got three, three, I say three great guests that are going to be joining How us many? here. Three <laughs> that will be joining us here this afternoon. Uh, our first guest is going to be Richard Mel from Grape Escape Wine Tours and they do awesome wine tours all through Niagara on the Lake and I can hardly wait to hear what he's got to say this afternoon. Yep, that's going to be very interesting and then following up on that after we learn about all the amazing things that there are to do in Niagara on the Lake, of course there are some incredible places to stay while you're there also mm -hmm. which really rounds off your, your stay. So uh, we're going to be welcoming Janet Jones and she is the Technology Chair for the Bed and Breakfast Association of Niagara on the Lake and finally there's also some wonderful gastronomy in Niagara mm -hmm. on the Lake and Monique Glass that is going to be joining us to address the beautiful culinary treats that we have there and she's actually the owner of the old winery restaurant and of course we are going to be enjoying some wonderful wines as well from Niagara on the Lake here this afternoon so let's welcome our first guest Richard welcome to the wine ladies thank you very much for having me nice to meet you guys oh, nice, to, nice meet you to meet you as well too. you escaped I Great did. escape. I did. I did. <laughs> yes. How was your drive up here this afternoon? It was, it was pretty easy, yeah. Nice to find you guys and get here safely. So. Fantastic. Well, we're looking forward to hearing more about uh, the tours that you do. I mean, you, this the Grape, Grape Escape Tours, it's been going on about eight years now you're coming? Yeah, the, my father started the company about eight years ago. Uh -huh. I've been involved with the business for the last three years, kind of helping him kind of increase sales and things. So things are going really, really well. We're seeing a great kind of increase in tourism traffic, especially to the wine region in Niagara-on-the-Lake. Now, I have a question for you. Were you a wine lover before you got into this, or has it been a labor of love? Uh, I've always been interested in wine as well as beer, obviously being from England. But, um, yeah, wine's always been a big passion of mine, and it's nice to kind of increase my knowledge as being part of the tours as well. So tell us, like, what would be a, a typical tour? Like, how many wineries do you typically do when you, when you, on, your, on your tours, let's yeah. just say? Yeah, so we generally visit and about four vineyards throughout the day. We pick okay. guests up directly from their hotels so they don't have to worry about driving anywhere. And take them to four different vineyards. We always make sure we include kind of a full facility tour so the guests get to see behind the scenes, a bit of the production room, the barrel cellar. And then we have tastings at all four of those wineries. Mm -hmm. And you brought in some wines from, I guess, these are from three different wineries, yes. of which are part of your tours. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can just tell us a little bit about the, uh, the wineries that, that are here and the different wines that you brought in. Yeah, for sure. So we actually work with probably 20 to 25 of the wineries in Niagara-on-the-Lake. I just okay. kind of chose three here, obviously, if we couldn't fit that much wine on the table. No. Right. Um, yeah. We could try, though. We could try, yeah. <laughs> and so I brought a 2012 Riesling from Hinterbrook Winery, which uh -huh. is... Um, a relatively new winery in Niagara on the Lake, small family owned, family operated property. Um, we love visiting some of the bigger wineries too, but mm -hmm. we also like to make sure people see some of the small boutique wineries as well right. that they may not find by themselves. So yes. Niagara on the Lake does have a whole variety from the small mm -hmm. boutique style to the huge wineries exactly. as well. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I mean, the smallest winery in Niagara on the Lake, Vignoble Rancor, only has eight acres of vineyard. So mm -hmm. very, very small scale up to your large kind of corporate enterprises like yeah. Jackson Triggs and Inniskillen. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I also brought um, a red blend from Culinary uh -huh. called Insieme, which mm -hmm. means together in Italian. Okay. And I brought, um, obviously we can't go speaking about Niagara on the Lake wineries without having some ice wine on the Absolutely table. Absolutely not. Right. So we brought the Vidal ice wine from Pilatary Estates too. Okay. 
Now tell me, where do most of the, your clients come from? Uh, are they more from the GTA or what areas do yeah. they we see, um, we see a high percentage from the GTA, obviously. It's a, it's a great weekend getaway for people, you know, just over an hour's drive down the road. Um, so I'd say probably 50 to 60% of our guests come from the GTA. Well, that's what we're doing with this wonderful contest. Mm. Everyone who has an opportunity to win this prize, th there were like five wonderful prizes, and every prize had a one or two night stay at, at a Niagara B&B. &B. Mm -hmm. So you can stay overnight, absolutely. Yeah, for there's sure. There's lots to do. Yep. You know what, in Niagara-on-the-Lake, like I remember reading somewhere, there's a, like a few quotes. I think actually when I was sort of checking out your website a little bit, um, first of all, Sir Winston Churchill, mm -hmm. didn't he say <laughs> that on the Niagara, Niagara Parkway, it's the, it's the beautiful, most beautiful stretch he's ever sort of um, driven along for a Sunday, Sunday drive. Exactly, it's the really prettiest stunning. Sunday afternoon drive in the world. And what are like what are some of the, what makes it so pretty? What are some of the stops that they see or some of the attractions? Well, there's a lot of historical sites driving down the parkway. You know, obviously Niagara on the Lake was a, a key element in the War of 1812, which mm -hmm. we've yes. just celebrated the bicentennial. Mm -hmm. That brought a lot of tourists to Niagara on the Lake too. Yeah. So you've got kind of McFarland House, Laura Secord. You've got a lot of historical lot of sites history. all the way. A lot of history in Niagara on the Lake too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the food also. There's amazing food. Wonderful restaurants there. There certainly is, yeah, yeah. 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 We actually incorporate some of the restaurants into our tours. We do kind of lunch okay. tours and dinner tours too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people can visit a few wineries, enjoy a, a winery restaurant meal as well. Before are we take are people home. often surprised that we have such a fabulous wine um, industry here in Ontario? Mm, I think that's a lot of my friends back in England. When, you know, when they found out what I was doing for a job over here, they kind of we're surprised because the, the Canadian wine market, unfortunately, has not quite expanded as much as what we would like to overseas. Right. So people, it's nice to bring kind of the fact that Canada has these amazing wines and wineries to people that are not from Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's not only all about ice wine, although no. that has helped us put on, on the map. Yes. I mean, we are really making some extraordinary table wines, uh, regular wines as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a lot of cool climate varietals that really, really do grow well in Niagara-on-the-Lake because of the lake effect and the, the Niagara Escarpment, which really helps to make Niagara-on-the-Lake such a great growing region. Now, speaking of wine, uh, mm -hmm. I, we've got three bottles here on the table, mm -hmm. and we've got three empty glasses. I think it's time we try something. What kind something. of wine ladies and wine, lady, and wine lady hosts are we anyway, Suzanne? Obviously not very good ones. <laughs> well, I know there was one that was open, so that was the NCMA, is yes, that the one so that's open? Yes, so this opened? is the, the red okay. blend from Culinary. Alrighty. So this has four varietals to, to make up the blend. Okay. It's 36% um, Cabernet Sauvignon, 32% mm. Cabernet Franc, 17% Merlot, and 12% Syrah. Okay. So it's and there's something very special about the way this wine is made and the style in which it's made. Exactly, yeah. So 100% um, of the fruit that goes into this wine is, is actually dried in a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So it's made a passamento style. Right. which really intensifies the flavors of the wine. So. Yes, yes. Look at that color. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. What year is it? So this one is a 2011, 2011? I believe. 2011? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a toast to this, yeah, don't you so think cheers. so? Cheers. Cheers. Yes. cheers. Mm -hmm. mm. Very lovely, very, very rich and velvety, lots of flavor. And Mm -hmm. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. The beauty of this wine is each sip you kind of get a different thing from it because mm -hmm. it's got the four varietals in there. Yes, I love the culinary estate. I love the people there too. Suzanne and I have been there a few times. Actually, they were mm -hmm. on one of our tours as well. Yeah, when we did an ice did. wine tour. Yes, yeah, they're lovely. And it's Andre that, that's the winemaker there. And I think he does almost all of the wines in this Apasamento style, does he not? Yes, over there? Yep, yep, all yeah. of their wines. I think there's only one wine that they have that doesn't involve the kind of Apasamento style of, of winemaking. They've done very, very well, and the mm -hmm. wines are wonderful there. Yeah. Now, if someone wants to book a tour with you guys, how do they do that? So we have lots of ways to book. Obviously, we have an online booking system. They can visit our website at tourniagrawineries.com. They can give us a call at our office. Um, yeah, so there's lots of ways to get in touch and book a tour. And is there a variety of prices? Um, can people like book for like overnight or just go for a day? Or yeah, we how can does do, that work? We do packages. We work very closely with the B and B Association, uh -huh. so we do kind of accommodation packages too. Um, or they can just book a winery tour if they're just kind of visiting for the day, varying from kind of forty-four dollars right the way up to one hundred and thirty if they want kind of a a dinner and wine pairing to be included. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one thing about Niagara-on-the-Lake also is, you know, it's not only about the summer, 
I mean, there are always some, there are always so many things to do there, whether it's spring, summer, fall, winter, yeah. and we have our Ice Wine Festival. And I heard, actually, there's something new that's coming out this year. What's I think that? it's called the, um, the Icebreakers Comedian Festival or something like oh. that. Have you heard about that? I haven't, actually. Comedy. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're going to have comedians going, going to all the local bars and different restaurants. They're going to be pairing up wines with, with the comedians. I'm not really sure how that's going to work, but it's, it's something new. Like, it's another attraction that they're going to have there. So I think that's going to be really fun. Yeah, it's great the way the way that the town works. You know, they really do kind of include things all year round to bring different people at different times of the year to try and keep everybody busy year round. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think we should probably um, close this little section off for this afternoon, and uh, we'll uh, say hello to uh, Janet Jones, who's going to be our next guest. So, Richard, thank you for coming in and sharing everything about your company. You're welcome. Thanks again for having me. Thank okay. you. See you in Niagara. Yeah. <laughs> So we've just uh, had a, a wonderful conversation with Richard telling us about all the wonderful things there are to do in Niagara-on-the-Lake. And of course, if you're going to be going there and you're going to be staying a couple of nights, a weekend or a week, there are, it's very important to have the right destination to stay at. Mm -hmm. And Janet Jones here has that covered in a really big way. She's the technology chair at the Niagara-on-the-Lake Bed and Breakfast Association. Plus, she also has her own bed and breakfast called the Carbonell. So Janet, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks so much for having us. So do tell. I mean, we did spend some time in Niagara on the Lake last summer and did a tour yes. of some of the B and B's. Fabulous. Wow, what a terrific choice there is out there. Unlimited supply. Yeah. Just literally. Something for everybody. <laughs> well, literally. and a lot of us, right? There's about 136 members of the association. Uh-huh. And they represent small one room only operations to, you know, larger villas that are five rooms, but the majority are three room bed and breakfasts. Okay. And so and they are old, historic and they are modern, and they yes. are rural, and they are down right near the cenotaph. The easiest way I um, will tell people is if you go to the website, um, which is niagarabedandbreakfast.com, mm -hmm. there's an ability to filter. So uh -huh. each person, you want. exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you need a king size bed, if you need ground level entry, if you need uh -huh. one kilometer to the cenotaph, you can filter all those things. Awesome, that's convenient. It and, is. And, yeah, you, and the cause, contest we did last week was the fourth giveaway that we had, and your B&B was featured in It that. is, yeah. And the Ice Wine Festival, my God. We're that excited. was so popular. We had thousands of entries for that. Well, it's January, and again, you talked to Richard about your core you know, demographic coming to Niagara-on-the-Lake, yes. and certainly GTA is definitely it. And if you want to get away in January, which most of us do, yes, yeah. we don't necessarily get to go all south. So <laughs> just a little, just south a little bit south on the lake <laughs> for, for a change of scene and, and a little so wine. Never it's hurts. Pretty, with a right. little bit of snow, a little bit of ice. Yes. So, so it's lovely, and we're excited. It's my first um, winter in Niagara on the Lake, so oh, we're really? looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, wow. So. That's true. You said you were from Winnipeg originally. Yes, we just so moved. It's not be originally, warm for you. but most recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, although the dampness is kind of interesting, but yeah. So, which is lovely. So it's fun, and you know, and there's so much more to do than just wine as well. Yeah. Right? And that's the we think one of the big pluses of staying at a B and B is you get that personal experience. And so whatever your interests are, if it's cycling, then your host can send you off to the right cycling paths, right. whether that's the Welland Canal or along the parkway, mm -hmm. or if you're into just walking or you want to hike the Bruce Trail, yes. those outdoor activities, golf, obviously. But um, if you're historical and you want to go to the museum, the art galleries, there's play, a never ending there's art, oh, there's of course. Plays, the there's Shaw Festival, Shaw Festival, which when you say, well, people come for more than a couple of nights. I mean, we have had a number of guests that stay for a week and That's do awesome. the Shaw Festival. Of course, is the Days of Wine and Chocolate in February yes. that's coming up as well. A little bit tied to oh, goodness. Valentine's yes. and that time of year is There's perfect. a lot so. to do. Well, and even through the winter, uh, the Shaw Festival has a wine, uh, not a wine, sorry, a movie um, series. Oh, I that, did see film that. series yeah. that they do. Right, they have like so documentary series yeah. also, no different. Right? Send some older movies, some classics that they show at the theater. So yeah. it's something fun again, and a little indoor activity. That and of course the breakfasts at your B and B's, eggs Benedict, whatever you want. They we they all have our specialties. What, what's yes. the specialty at your spot? Um, I do a stuffed baked French toast with a fresh blueberry sauce. Ooh, that sounds good. It's lots of fun. Stuffed so. baked French toast. What's it stuffed with? Uh, stuffed with a little cheese and sweet mixture, and oh. then yeah, it's a lovely one. Oh, 
that sounds good. That's a little decadent, but you're on holidays. About 25 exactly. calories, right? Yeah, just low cal. <laughs> right, exactly. I know when I was researching the Carbonell, I thought, wow, and I was going through some of the Oh, she's got great reviews. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. This gracious hose. Well, thank you. I mean, it sounds lovely. It's we have like a, lots a little of bit fun. like a Tuscan style. A little well, bit I, it's, it's really, we're a country house for the most part, but we okay. have one plus that perhaps most don't, which is we have a fully accessible suite for uh -huh. people in wheelchairs. Uh, with a roll-in oh. access ramp and roll-in shower and so everything oh, awesome. is really accessible. So. Now do most of the people that own B&Bs, do they live there full-time or are they, are they more weekend warriors? Oh, or no. How, no, it's a it's it's not just a job. Yeah, it's, it's your passion, it's, it's Well, and it's your home mm -hmm. right. and that's the fun part of it too, right? Is that's why never most lonely. of us do it. <laughs> no, and you're doing it for that purpose, the fun to meet and breakfast is always the most exciting because you've got often three different couples and they're sitting around the breakfast table meeting each other and yeah. talking about their own experiences. And we had a great one. We had um, a couple from Slovenia, a couple from Aus Australia, and a couple from Toronto at the same breakfast. Wow. And the conversation is just, it's so much fun to listen yeah. to and to hear them enjoy each other and tell their stories. And they go all over the place, the conversations. So. And it's like you traveling with them. I mean, that must be really fun just to it meet is. the different characters, right? Well, and sometimes, you know, you've traveled to the same places. And so there's lots of different comparative stories as well. And people are there, some of them for special occasions. We had a couple that were doing their um, bucket list tour, three months uh -huh. around the world, and Niagara Falls was one. So, of course, lots of people visit the falls and stay in the Niagara on the lake. It's a little mm -hmm. quieter environment, perhaps. So. Yeah. Now, for those we, who we, don't know, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was, I was, we asked Richard what, we, what people thought of the uh, wine here in Canada. And from your perspective, from people that stay at the B&Bs, what, what do they think of Canadian wine? Most of them are, uh, are strongly supportive, especially lots of them come specifically for the wine uh -huh. tours. But we've had plenty of visitors from Europe who are uninitiated mm -hmm. in Canadian wine. And my husband is a sommelier and a wine guru. Okay. Uh -huh. So he, and a very strong fan of Canadian wines, even though he's from France, so he's often Good. encouraging and sending people off to try things that are different. And, nice. and it's exciting when they come back after those experiences and talk about how great that experience was and how, yeah. not necessarily surprised, but how pleasant you mm -hmm. know, the wines were. So yeah. it's, it's, fun. it's fun when the wine is the big part of it. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and Niagara on the Lake, for those who don't know, is not that far from Niagara Falls. Like, how long does it take oh, to get from the falls? 20 to... minutes at top. Yeah. And you talked about the parkway before. I mean, mm -hmm. it is one of the most beautiful drives yeah. to take people to, into the falls, right? And then you end up at the falls sort of by accident almost. Right. And uh, it's wonderful, right? And people enjoy it year-round. You know, when it's covered in snow, it's a whole nother experience. Uh -huh. What's your favorite time to go to Niagara on the Lake, would you say? Do you oh, have a favorite? Uh, I like the fall because I love the colors as they change. Mm -hmm. And when you see the bench, you know, the escarpment as yeah. you come in and you see those. And it's a little bit quieter. So for me, I kind of enjoy that experience where you have a little bit more After time. the harvest? Just after well, the no, because the harvest goes on a lot longer than I thought, right? Some, <laughs> they start quite early, and they sometimes keep going for yeah. quite, quite late. This year was a very prolonged harvest, as uh -huh. I understand. So there's lots going on, and when you get to the vineyards, you sometimes will get to get into the vineyard itself, uh, and they'll show you that process, too. So it's a very interactive experience. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm, absolutely. And do you have a favorite place, like, um, like when it comes to the cuisine? Do you have, like, a special stomping ground where you like to go to? Oh. We're still testing it out because we're relatively new. So that was our winter project to check out all the restaurants. We have a book that the B&B Association publishes. Oh, see that? Okay. That? And it's a restaurant menu guide. Oh. And what the restaurants do is they put their menus actually in it in okay. one place. So our guests then can wander through mm. it oh, and great. see the menus and see what they're looking for. Fantastic. And so, you know, it's an easy way to support the restaurants and an easy way for the restaurants to connect to our guests. Yeah. Well, our so. next guest is actually a owner of one of the, ni the nicest cover. restaurants uh, in Niagara-on-the-Lake, and that's uh, Monique Glatt from the Old Winery Restaurant, of which we have enjoyed a yes. number of times. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be joining us next. Uh, thank you so much for um, joining us. Well, this thank afternoon. you both. It's been fun. Thank okay. you, Janet. All right. Well, we've talked a little bit about the wonderful places places that you can stay at Niagara on the Lake, and of course the wines. But a big part about Niagara on the Lake is the awesome restaurants and foods that they have there. So our next guest is Monique Glatt Landry from Old Winery Restaurant, who is now joining us, and she is 
of course, brought some vino with her as well. And we've actually been to your restaurant. It is a fabulous spot, and your pizza is to die for. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're so disappointed we don't have any of that delicious pizza here today. But well, we wouldn't have traveled really well. No, you were in town yesterday, I guess, yes. right? So, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, but we've well, been we just have to come back and uh, come back to the winery, or to the restaurant, and have it again. Well, so we've good. been on a bit of a program, anyways, in terms of like uh, watching our calories. So I don't know. Do you have like whole wheat pizza there? We have a spelt pizza dough now. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of the customers that come in are gluten free or low gluten. Uh, we have all kinds of uh, different uh, dietary restrictions now, more that so than the last few years. Like lately, it's been. Uh -huh. So we're trying really hard to you know, devise different recipes for um, people's intolerances. But whole wheat crust, we haven't, we haven't got that. Okay. We haven't got that. Well, it's okay. We can have the gluten-free. We're allowed yeah. to have the white flour anyway, as long as it's not like the, the whole pizza. <laughs> right. that, that's where it becomes But how do you resist the whole pizza? That's the whole question. I don't know. You're asking me? <laughs> <laughs> the pizzas aren't very uh, caloric dense. They're not, they're not that bad because the, the crust is so incredibly thin That's and, true. and because the crust is so incredibly thin, um, Tony who, who made the recipe for the pizza did not want a lot of ingredients so that he'd call it a sad pizza, a happy pizza. So oh, they had to stay um, flat when someone was eating it and it wouldn't oh. fall on their lap. So there's not oh. a lot of ingredients and the, th the crust is very thin. So in terms of choices in a restaurant, it's not a bad one. Okay. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So let's talk about the culinary scene a little bit in Niagara-on-the-Lake. Um, what is the Niagara cuisine? I saw an article on that and I was like, wow, how do you wrap your head around that? What is that? Is it local? Like, what is it? Niagara cuisine yeah. is, is pretty much everything now. We have, you know, we have Thai, we have fine dining, we have, you know, Mediterranean cuisine. We have everything now. Yeah. There are probably, I was looking at the, the B&B book that Janet brought, mm -hmm. there are 29 listings there. And Niagara-on-the-Lake, the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, they're only the whole the whole area is only fifteen thousand people, and so, so they eat out a 30. lot. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. In the winter it's kind of tough sometimes, unless they're having festivals and, and the like. But uh, yeah. you, they do have a lot of choices. That's why a lot yeah. of people like to retire there. There's just so much going on for a very small town. If you went to a small town somewhere else, um, there'd be you know the Chinese restaurant. The greasy spoon and yeah. you yes, know, it's quite a yeah. sophisticated. Yeah. It's, 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 it's country, but it's very it's a very sophisticated right. air about it for definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And you know you have all all kinds of choices. You have your winery restaurants, which are yeah. you know five star dining, um, very renowned chefs uh, yes. all over Canada. Mm -hmm. And then you have you know your less expensive fare at the medium, um, right? And then you have your diners as well. So, and then there are gelati places, there are yeah. delis downtown, there's just everything. There's a Chinese food restaurant downtown, and then there's a Thai restaurant at, um, on, on Lakeshore, uh, Ginger's, which is awesome. So We ate there. I think we ate there at Ginger's, actually. Yes, we did. It was really, yes, really good. good. Yeah. And of course, yeah. they all have wonderful wine lists with the local wonderful wine from Niagara-on-the-Lake. Well, many of the restaurants don't bring any imports. Mm -hmm. We have, I think, five on our list, and there are, we have 103 wines on our, mm -hmm. on our wine list. Well, wow. so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Might we, as well go we, local. You know, we do. We yeah. do. Yeah. And if someone actually orders an import at my restaurant, and they've, if they've ordered it from me, I will say, well, I can, I can give you a Niagara wine that's just as good or better than that one at the same price point. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, oh, well, what if we don't like it? I'll say, if you don't like it, I'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you you're not drinking very much because they're all so good. So no, like, <laughs> no, it's, no they, they, they never come back. So there you go. It's, and, and it's really changed a lot, too. Like, I don't know, like over the last, what, five, ten years, like the, the region is tracked, as attracting, like you said, a lot of these top chefs. Yes, and a lot of people come for the wine now. Mm -hmm. It used to be everybody used to come for the Shaw Festival, yeah. which, which is still a good draw, um, but it's the demographics are different. Um, mm -hmm. People who come for the wineries are a little younger. younger. They're yeah. younger. Shaw's a little older, and, yeah. and the people, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we don't have that huge rush at 5 o'clock like we used to. <laughs> <laughs> The early know. bird specials. Yeah, the early well, it, it's very much it's very much a retirement town, mm -hmm. but the tourists are not all retirees or you know going to the Shaw anymore. And right. the wineries have just done a bang up job of advertising the area, and they, of course they make fantastic wines. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think also they are uh, everyone's kind of working together mm -hmm. as, a, as an association like the B and B Association mm -hmm. to get the word out about the wonderful places to stay, and also now with all your restaurants, there's there's so many things to see and do. It's wonderful. And what about some of this, uh, this sparkling that you brought with us? Brought this, this is um, 
I think uh, John it's from Egomaniac. Um, it's a bubble head. It, uh, we put it on a, a house floor, so we sold it by the glass for a while, and everybody that had it loved it. Loved it. Okay. So I like um, the name. Bubblehead. Bubble <laughs> it puts you in a bubbly mood right all, off the bat. All Megalomaniac's wines are very clever. So you want me to open this? Okay. Sure. sure. Yeah, I let's give not, it a uh, shot. All right. We don't have any wine flutes or champagne flutes, but um, anyway, um, all his wines have interesting names. Um, Son of a bitch. Um, let me see. It's all about me. Uh, <laughs> narcissist Riesling. What's interesting about that, it's all about me, narcissistic Riesling, but actually it's not all about him because you were saying yeah, that the, a lot of the profits go to... Um, for ch uh, hospitals, children in hospitals across the country to uh, bring them... Um, uh, he's set up a network. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but um, so that he found that um, the children wanted to communicate with other children in the same... You know, the same conditions. situation and uh -huh. conditions, and yeah. so yeah, so they uh, a lot of the profits go towards that, and I actually just found that out last year, and I thought, well, that's I'm awesome. more of his wine. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's that little added something special absolutely. that sort of pushes you, you know, to want to enjoy their wine when you see something. Oh, woo! There you go. <laughs> no matter how many times we've done that, it that always was, that always surprises fast. me. That was fast. <laughs> yeah, me At least glass. it didn't go like scurrying off and you know hitting somebody off there in the audience or hitting a camera or something like that, which wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. No. Thank you. Is this uh, Pinot Noir or what yes, kind I of think, uh, sparkling yeah, wine do we yes, have it here? This is Pinot Noir. It's uh, it's pink. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely. Try it. You'll love it. And I, I think it's quite reasonable in the price you were it saying. Is. It right? is. It's in the low 20s. Awesome. Um, I'll just turn it around. I love so his labels. And, and, and the man himself, is, is he's a character in, uh, in his own right anyway. He's a very, very nice, colorful man also. And, yes, And obviously is. a very good, generous man as well. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful nose. Yeah. Somebody asked us, we were actually doing a, another show the other day, and somebody was saying, um, when it comes to the holidays, what's like a great wine to serve over the holidays? And you know what? We always say bubbly is a really good way to go for a lot mm. of reasons. And people say, so what do you pair with champagne? I said, absolutely everything. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Goes with everything. It does. It really does. Mm -hmm. And what else have you brought here this afternoon? Um, I just I just picked this one up. It's a 2012 um, Gamay from Fielding Estate Winery, also on the bench, as well as um, Megalomaniac. Um, okay. It's this it's year's delicious. great king, Curtis Fielding. Oh, is, oh, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Gamay is done really well in Niagara, and it's not uh, something people say, can I have a Gamay? They'll say, can I have a Cap Sauv? Can I have a yeah. Chardonnay? But Gamays are, are just unbelievably good in Niagara mm -hmm. and uh, it's the same grape as Coast de Beaujolais in, in France yeah. mm -hmm. and this one's delicious 2012 apparently I've heard this many times going to be the best year ever <laughs> ever wow. Ever, ever wow so the reds are going to be great the whites are always good the Chardonnays are always good yeah. um, you know depending on uh, on the the Rieslings are always good um, the reds do really well on those hot years like the 2007 vintage the 2010 vintage and this vintage apparently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is best ever and here's a nice <laughs> white uh, and oh, that's South from Brook. Southbrook. Oh, yes, ah. the uh, organic winery. Biodynamic. Biodynamic. Yeah. We yeah. actually did a um, yoga in the vineyard this summer with these guys. Oh, wow. It was amazing. <laughs> we actually did yoga in the vineyard. It was like a religious... After. After. It was, dog. it was like <laughs> a downward dog. religious <laughs> experience. It was just... <laughs> Wasn't it, Georgia? It yeah, was among the sheep. It was, it was, it really, was, it was great. Well, the sheep were roaming special, around us. Special winery. I love those sheep. I drive by there all the time. They're so cute. Oh, yeah, they are. They are. It has another dimension. I don't know. It's like you're right there among the vineyards, and the sheep are roaming around. And the You know what? It adds to the experience. It really does. And Pond View, this is Lou, our uh -huh. friend Lou. Yeah. Another former Grape King. Yes, that's yes, true. that's right. Lou. This yeah. cab, so um, the, the year is 2010, uh -huh. um, is... I'd put this beside any California $70 cab so Is that right, eh? Absolutely. It's delicious. It's wow. delicious, and it'll probably be a lot better in a couple of years. You could sell it for a couple of years, but it's it's amazing. And how much does it sell for about? Do you know? Um, I, I do believe it's somewhere around $29, $29 $30. Um, wow. We, we sell it by the glass, and everybody that has it says, so where's this winery? Uh-huh. So. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, he does a great job. He does. He and really they say, does. you know, it, it, it starts in the vineyard. And so here we have, like, he was a grape king, 
and also Curtis was a great. Actually, you know what I heard recently um, about Fielding Estates is that apparently they people have um, there's some investors that have been coming up to Curtis and Heidi. I think saying, "Do you want to sell? Do you want to mm -hmm. sell?" And they're, "Nope, nope, we're all good. We're all good." So uh, we're talking about like that. Just that speaks to I think. Um, the level of where our Ontario wine industry has come is when we're starting to get all this investment and all this interest from around the world. There's a lot of French people, a lot of French companies like from and Burgundy. winemakers from all over the world as absolutely. well. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. That really, I really think that's a, a great nod to um, the Niagara yeah, Australia wine is country. not much bigger than you know the, than Canada, and you have they have great international reputation. True. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how they did that. Um, yeah. However, I will. I you know I'm the biggest the biggest fan of Niagara wines. If I go to a restaurant and they haven't got a Niagara wine, particularly if they're really close to Niagara, sure. yes. I will say, so, um, where's your Canadian wine? Uh -huh. Good yeah. for you. It's down the street. Uh -huh. oh, oh, well, we don't like Canadian wine. Uh -huh. yeah. Have you tried? <laughs> yeah. So I've yeah. convinced a lot of my friends and my family to, okay, try this, you're going to love it. Try this, they're going to love it. Now they, they buy it all the time. So it's just a matter of you know, getting people trying the wines and not thinking of you know, brights from 25 years ago. Yeah, you have to get over that, folks. Like, oh my goodness, we've grown up, we've matured, we've got some fantastic wines. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah. And to go with all the great food, obviously, again, like we were saying in Niagara-on-the-Lake. So just want to, again, like reiterate to everybody, come out to Niagara-on-the-Lake. There's and so much to do. stay at a Niagara B&B. Yeah. Now the B&Bs are, some of them are, oh, wow. So we have yeah. one more contest uh, in January, mm -hmm. and that, one more great prize to give away. Uh, and that is going to be a stay in Niagara-on-the-Lake in February during the Days of Wine and Chocolate. Wow. And we actually did a tour last year on we that did? and it was spectacular. So make sure you uh, visit Niagara B&B uh, website and come out to the old yeah. winery restaurant, try their pizza and their salads are amazing as well and a great wine list. And thanks so much, Monique. Oh, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. Okay. Great to see you. And happy holidays. Okay, you too. <laughs>
What a gem of a destination. No wonder it was ranked 12 out of the top 25 destinations in Canada. We invite you all to come on Niagara on the Lake. You'll be so glad you did.